What's up, Archie Squad? Most of you might think that to be an architect, you must be good at drawing and must be very creative. But none of that will matter if you do not have this specific skill. Okay, so as an architect, most of my time is spent drawing and creating designs and I believe that this is very important. But one skill that most people forget that is very crucial to every architect and architecture student is our presentation skills. Because no matter how good your designs and ideas are, if you can't communicate it to your clients effectively, then your ideas are just gonna go to waste. Imagine listening to a song with the greatest lyrics anyone has ever written, but the singer sounds horrible. So no matter how poetic or touching the lyrics are, I doubt that you guys will be able to appreciate the song if the singer is super out of tune. <laughs> So just like how a great song lyrics needs a great singer, your designs, drawings, and plans must go hand in hand with your presentation skills. So with that in mind, I made a short list of things you guys must remember when presenting your designs to anyone. Tip number one, mindset. Mindset is everything. Back when I was a high school student, I used to be very bad at presenting to other people. I would immediately get nervous the moment I was called to the stage to present. And unfortunately, my nerves would get the best of me. I would just end up muttering out my words and talking all hunched up like this, trying to make myself as small as possible. And because of this, I would often end up just embarrassing myself. Only later have I realized that having the proper mindset before presenting could greatly help me overcome my my nerves. And it only took one phrase to help me get over this fear of talking in front of people. Be not afraid. That phrase is so simple, it's just like three words but it could mean so much. For me, it meant that there is nothing to fear when presenting. Like what am I supposed to be afraid of when I'm speaking to people? Getting embarrassed when I make a mistake? Well, you know, mistakes happen and it's more embarrassing if you just stand around all quiet like this and you just like forget everything that you prepared. Just remember that this presentation won't kill you and people will understand if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world so keep that in mind tip number two lead with agreeable stories you guys see how I led with the story in that first tip? Just like that, you have to lead with stories that will make yourself more relatable to your clients to make them feel that you are also human just like them. This will make them more open to things you say and thus help them listen to you better. Also make sure that your stories are agreeable and will make your clients say stuff like me too or I know how that feels or you know stuff like that. It is scientifically proven that if you begin a conversation with a positive flow meaning that both parties involved in the conversation are in agreement, then it is more likely for both parties to continue the positive flow of the conversation. So what this means is basically you and the client will get along easier with ideas and your design proposals and it could possibly even lead you to closing a deal with that said client. Which brings us to our tip number three, follow with the facts. Now you guys see what I did there. For tip number one, I began with the story. And then on tip number two, I said a scientific fact about beginning the conversation with positive flow and how getting an affirmative response from the people you're presenting to could help people engage with you more. Tipception. Kind of like when your first tip is inside the second tip and the second tip is part of the... F I'm so confused right now. <laughs> okay, so just like those super meta examples, starting off with agreeable stories, then following it with solid facts will help you establish trust with your viewers or clients early on in your presentation. And you know what they say, if your audience trusts you, then they will listen. And there's nothing more satisfying than saying a point or a fact than seeing somebody on your audience nod just just like that you say something like mangoes are awesome and then one of the audience people are like so satisfying my dudes it's like you can almost hear what they're thinking damn right son okay let's move on to tip number four pause and ask questions 
Now, one important thing to remember when presenting is that there are two parties involved in this presentation. You and the people you are presenting to, i.e. your clients. Just remember that this is a conversation and you must include the other person. Make sure to take your time and ask the client some questions like how do you feel about this design or just ask for their feedback. This technique will make them feel included and will often lessen the tension in the room and will also relieve the pressure from you having to talk all throughout your presentation. Just make sure that you are listening to their message and always respond positively. But instead of just saying yes, say that's correct or I completely agree. You also have to do the snappy finger thing. So by saying these phrases instead of a simple yes, this validates your client's point and makes you a more likable conversation partner. On the other hand, if you disagree with their point, never ever say, I disagree or you're wrong. That doesn't work with that phrase. Anyways, remember to not ever say that. One way to politely disagree is to just say, I completely understand your point, good sir, fellow handsome man. Or just say, you've got a good point. So by saying these phrases, you are not totally agreeing, but you are also not invalidating your client's points, which is a totally bad thing if you invalidate your clients. This will lead to them avoiding any actual conversation with you that could lead to you disagreeing to them again. So yeah, just avoid negative phrases when disagreeing with your clients. Which brings us to our next tip, which is the reciprocity theory. The reciprocity theory is basically like the golden rule where if you do something kind for another person, they are likely to reciprocate that kindness towards you. It is proven that people who are recipients of acts of kindness are very eager to return that act of kindness back to the one who gave it to them. This is because of our human nature. So we as individuals do not want to owe anyone anything. We do not want to be indebted to them and often we feel obliged to give something in return, maybe something even more than what they have given us. It is this exact feeling when you have that inner urge to just do something good in return. You know that feeling? That is the feeling that we are going to take advantage of. So anytime you are meeting with clients or a jury for your thesis, just offer them a small snack or a glass of water or any beverage. By doing so, you now have applied the reciprocity technique upon them and now they will feel indebted to you and will be eager to return the kindness you gave to them. So they will probably do so by agreeing to things you say or by listening to you intently. And there you go, mind control for beginners. Okay, let's get on with our sixth step, body language. Now, body language is one of the most important aspects of communicating your ideas to others. If you are just sitting there all closed up like this, there's a tendency that the person you're talking to will feel defensive and trust you less. One of the reasons you shouldn't do this is because closed body language subconsciously conveys that you are like hiding something. So when talking, always remember to open your arms and your hands and straighten your back and try to imagine yourself getting taller but don't be too stiff like batman in his bat suit just stay relaxed and move your hands when you're trying to make a point to emphasize your points okay let's move on to tip number seven eye contact now the rule of thumb when making eye contact is to just do it for four to five seconds any more longer than that and you just end up looking hella creepy also remember to blink that actually made my eyes super dry Whew. So one of my rookie mistakes was not blinking and focusing too much on counting how many seconds I'm doing the eye contact thing. So yeah, just try to act natural. I know that sounds hard, but with enough practice, you guys should get the hang of these things. Which brings us to our last and final tip, practice. So you guys won't be able to do all of these tips in one day. It is going to take a ton of trial and error and a lot of practice to be able to apply all of these tips when presenting. It took me probably like 5 years to be able to properly present to people. So don't be frustrated if you still suck at presenting after watching this video. Just remember that that is normal. Sucking is the first step to getting good at something. That's a quote I learned from adventure time. <laughs> if you have a camera, then it's better to practice while recording yourself. That way you can rewatch yourself and figure out what mistakes you made and you could correct them. When it gets frustrating, just remember the more practice you do right now, the less practice you will need in the future. 
That doesn't make sense, dang it. Also, one of my tips when presenting is to find your own style. So me, I found that my style is some sort of awkward, bringy type of presentation and I find that it works to my advantage since it is going to relax my clients or the people I'm talking to. So yeah, it might be hard at first finding your own style but once you find it, you will see that presenting to people will be so much easier. With that being said, go out there and start practicing my dudes. I believe in you. Woo, that's a wrap my dudes. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below for more architectural videos like this from me, your boy Lian. I will see you guys on my next video. Flying peace.